Oh, boof by Jingos. We've got a blown CV boot here. How cool is that, eh? Check that out. Look at that big blow up job. That is massive. It's like a big fat CV boot. Butter bing, butter boom there, I tell you. Hoo -hoo. Um, apparently, the boot sort of split or something. So, uh, this has done nearly 300,000 k. So, that's what they normally look like. Right, there's your, you know, your outer, there's your inner. Right, all good. And just doing a bit of a service, a major service actually. We're going to get to this, oh, this diff plug and see what happens. Ah, it looks like uh, someone's had a go at it recently. We'll have a look. Uh, it could be one that's been over tightened and looks like it's been leaking a bit here or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. Someone's, someone's had a go at these. What's going on? You know? Anyway, we're looking at this CV boot, weren't we? Some uh, emergency throw it over the top type CV boot, and I reckon could work putting that over there and getting it all zip tied on and getting it all to seal up. It's like an emergency situation fix up your CV boot. Look, I don't think I'd really worry about it depending how bad it was. You just go whatever and then you uh, put a new drive shaft in. But there you go, there's an option. I haven't used one of those before. I think they somehow fold over. It's like a. Let me see. I don't even know how they work. Uh, somehow it folds, looks like it's, maybe is that over? I really don't know how they work. It just sort of joins together. There's like a seam there, I think. I'm not sure how they work. I'm sure people watching know more than me about it. It's kind of like a bit of a, maybe it's a quick dodgy fix up type thing. Maybe that's why I don't uh, know about it. But I know that this has got the old original suspension at 300,000 Ks. We're gonna have a look at a few other things on this. We'll try and get a bit of a, uh, how to deal with that. If we have trouble getting this front plug out, how to deal with it, because it just looks very uh, like someone's had a go at it, over tightened and tried to get it undone probably a number of times over the years, but including recently. Okay, so you know, you saw it look pretty butchered. We've got the German made 10 mil in there. I don't reckon it's looking good at all. Um, all right, assistant here. All right, you go, mate, see what happens. <laughs> just pull it, mate, just pull it. Destroy it. Go on, go for it. Nah, no good. See, that's what happens when they've been over tightened. Mince meat. Now, how do you get it out? Oh, so it's butchered now. Let's get in there and have a closer look at it, right? You can see it is butchered. What are we going to do? Okay, let me just go and have a little look here. I've got my, uh, where's my chisels here that I like to use on this? There's the big one. Now, where's the little sharp one? There it is, okay. We've nearly got the tools. We've got two tools at hand. I'll zoom out again, I'll show you what we're going to use, right? Sit tight. It's all part of the excitement. I love doing this. So, you know, uh, people have a little panic attack wearing at home. This rarely happens to us. I've been waiting a long time to be able to show you this, and I'm sure I've showed it in other videos, but the first thing I use is, if you can do the light around that side, please, mate. And that side of the tire. First thing we do, see this little chisel? It's a little old one, part handed down from my uh, grandfather. He was a mechanic, right? They used to own the, sh the servo, the Shell servo in Heidelberg back in the day, right? So I'm probably talking back in the 1950s or something like that, right? Mate, the gun mechanic, right? Anyway, that was a hand-me-down from him. So here we go, right? First thing I want to do is I want to make a little, kind of like an indent mark a grip spot, if you like. I'm not trying to get it out, I'm going. I'm putting a mark there. See the mark, it's quite a decent mark there now. I'm not gonna try and use this sharp chisel. The sharp chisel was to put the mark there. If I try and turn that, it's gonna chisel and cut it away, right? So then we put that down. And we get the big MF, right? This is the big MF, right? And you can see it's been used, right? Hey, it's from the grandfather again. Look at the end of that. You reckon he's hit a few things with that? And it's quite flat on the end. Now what I want to do is sit that in there, right? Lock it in. I'm going to give a few gentle taps just to get it a, a nice position. But when I'm ready, I've got the big hammer, right? The big old first year apprentice mash hammer. Probably picked it up at the uh, Caribbean Gardens market, right? And then we give it one good, like that, right? And then you'll find that, well, it moved a little bit, maybe, 
but it's not coming as easy as what they so this is a good video because i like when we get a hard one on video let's go in a little bit here we go let's see if we get a bit of a harder one so we want to get a good grip there we don't want to lose our knuckles and we want to try and turn the damn thing right i think that turned a little bit what do you think you don't reckon it's turned okay so we've got we've got differing opinions here whether it's turned or not let's see try it go again we have to this could we need a hard one for a video don't we all right it's not actually turning so whoever did this before is an absolute idiot okay because i've taken hundreds of these out including damaged ones not so many and usually that would easily get it out so Whoever did this up is the biggest moron that shouldn't be touching cards. Now, I'm sorry, it could be the owner himself, you never know. And of course, he's not qualified to work on vehicles, so should have watched the videos first, maybe. Sorry if that's the case. I've talked about it in videos. This is the problem. People need to know what they're doing. Careful who you take your vehicle to. So I'm going to get the little chisel again, and I'm going to put a little bit more of a grippy mark in it, hopefully. All right. Bit of butcherism. All right. Now we're going to get that big one again. And stop mucking around. Now what's the saying that I haven't said lately? It's not butter bing butter. Wasn't there? Yeah, well, it is butter bing butter boom, all right? It is, isn't it? So when we get it out, it's going to be butter bing butter boom, all right? Okay. Big chisel again, say so Big one. What I've worked out what the problem is, the oil drain tray is still in the way. We'll move that down out of the way. Beautiful. No, that's not the problem. All right. Now, normally I sort of hold it up high and I put my smallest knuckle against the diff mounting bracket because I want to just be in a good position so I can give it a good smack without losing the hand here, all right? All right. Okay. Are we ready? Is everyone ready? Did that move that time? I'm getting the nod that that time it moved. Look at that, hey? Look at that. Who the man? Bada bing, bada boom. That's who the man. Now, next time you need a diff plug removed, just come and see me. That's how it's done. I might make it look easy. We've got this bit of a problem, you know, in the workshop and on the video sometimes. Sometimes I try and make things look hard. Like in the VIP videos, that's where I muck around and try and make it look hard. But this one is a bada bing, bada boom. Now, we better put that... Uh, oil drain tray under there. Now, a little bit of information about these uh, diff drain plugs. If you don't like the 10 mil, you can get on kon.com.au and upgrade to the Kon diff plug. It makes it like a 24 mil like everything else on the car. You can do that. Uh, you get them on eBay as well, whatever's easier for you. Uh, of course, Kon 4x4, they're the company you want to support. It's an Australian made product, Australian business, Australian jobs. I really like to support Australian products. And Australian businesses and small businesses, obviously they're gonna get bigger because they're good. And it's hard to not get bigger when you're good. So I'm, I'm not that good because I'm staying small. Anyway, it's not about me. You can use the genuine plug if you like. I'm gonna have a look, see what I got in stock. I generally don't keep these in stock. So if you want a K on plug, or you wanna come in the Prada Hospital for a major service, please get yourself one of these K-On plugs so that when this happens to your vehicle, we've got the plug ready to go in there. I do have at least one, probably a few, genuine Toyota plugs there. Uh, I don't have a problem with them. It's not an issue with a plug, it's an issue with over-tightening. Once you over-tighten it, uh, you're gonna most likely have problems. This one was severely over-tightened. It was quite suspect looking at it. And if you look at our older videos, you'll be able to see uh, the series of all the plugs we've shown over the years on, on our Facebook groups, the photos, you know, we've got a whole heap of them there. Some of them came in rusted out and, and the hole was like a 12 mil circle. So to, that was never going to happen. But the point is that was probably on par with one of the hardest ones I've had to get out. And I know some people are going to go, Oh, I had one heaps harder than that. Well, what I'm going to say is maybe your uh, skills aren't as good as mine. No, of course not. I've had a bit of practice doing them. These I've tried different ways and that is the system that works a big hammer. A nice little sharp one to put a grip mark. Did you notice that I haven't slipped, you know, other than that, you know, you hit it and you're trying to hold it in place, maybe a bit of a bounce over there. But did you notice it didn't actually slip? I got my grip mark in place there and bang, it was boom. We wanted to make sure it was out. Anyway, while we're at it, let's have a look underneath this vehicle and see what else there is. 
and for getting that out, bada bing, bada boom, all right? I thought we better come to the bench and just pull the bag out and see what we got in stock as far as uh, diff plugs and stuff like that go, so, before we get too carried away. This is all we've got in stock, all right? So I'm gonna give you some part numbers. We don't sort of buy these to sell them. I don't wanna be, this is more of an emergency situation. That's why I'm doing the video and I'm warning you. There's the K-On diff plug removal tool. We have actually used that heaps. We've smacked that. You can see all the marks in it with a hammer. The, the edge part where, you know, we've just hit it with a socket and smacked the edges off. But the quality of that is unbelievable, right? So you can see the dry cracked hands. Not good, is it? Yeah, painful. I think I need a couple of weeks off the tools, mate. Anyway, uh, I'm going to need longer than that. Quality rock hard. So this is your best chance because A, it keeps it square, right? It keeps it square by having this flat section here instead of just this part coming out and it's really hard still. I don't know how hard, but that's what you're paying for. Right, there's your, um, that's what it's called, right? Kaon, home.au, right? Like us on Facebook, Hilux, FJ Cruiser, diff removal tool. There's your washers, part number for the washers. Can't see that, so I'll get them out of the bag. Okay, so we've got a few plugs here, as you can see. We've got the genuine plugs and we've got one Kaon plug only, right? So I'm gonna save the Kaon plug because we've only got one, we don't buy and sell them. Get onto K and get one. Your other diff washers, in case you're interested in all your other diff plug washers, you know, for the rear diff and all that stuff, that's them. Let's get the washer out of the bag. I don't have the number for the genuine plugs either. As you can see, it's not on the bag, but we will get the washer number because you should probably change that each time you change your, that's the one for the dra diff drain plug. So, bada bing, we need one of those washers. Look, you don't have to replace the washer every time because you know what, it's, they're just little rip off things, two bucks, they should be 50 cents, but who cares? We're talking small money, right? You know, we don't want to be whatever. So we're going to get one of these out. As I said, nothing wrong with the plugs. Uh, it's just, they're meant to be about, I think I'm starting to forget, 65 Newton meters. So there you've got your washer with your new plug, plug with your new washer, whichever way you look at it. Nothing wrong with any of that. It's just, you can see how tight that fits as well. So this was engineered to fit the exact size of these holes and they're actually a really tight fit, right? So careful if you can't get it out again, bad luck. Um, we're gonna put the genuine plug in. They're 20 bucks with a washer, something like that anyway. I'm not, I'm not into dollars and cents, you know, something like that, around, something around about sort of like that. We'll do the job. Now let's go and check out the rest of the vehicle. Okay, under the vehicle, the usual on the steering rack, the usual slight, you know, sweat at the rack. Like we said, in other videos, you need to make sure you check the power steering oil level, especially on the 120s. This is on old original suspension, so it's going to be flogged and need replacement. Let's have a quick look at these bushes without delay. Oh yeah, those front ones, they were even ripped to pieces, right? See the front one in there? So the back one's going to be mincemeat as well, probably. <laughs> Not too bad. There you go. I've got a drain tray in the way here, see? Uh, you should check your oil pickup if you don't know what I'm talking about. Then you need to start watching more videos, right? That one looks alright, but I'm not focused in there. This is not the job I'm focused on. We're going to take a quick look under the vehicle. This video was mainly showing you how to get that diff plug out, but some interesting information could come up yet. Looks like the rear pads are pretty low, getting down to about 20%, 20-30%, to 30%, so... Mm, oh yeah, I'd say it's time to replace these rear pads, so... It's a rear pads are going to go on the list on this one. Uh, the rear diff is going to get changed as well. The rear diff oil, not the diff. You know what I mean. Right, these ones, they look reasonable. Probably never been changed before. That fuel filter is about to get changed as well. Oh no, someone's twisted that line and the whole... Look at that, the whole... That's not the way they normally sit. See the one said the two orange ones, the one on the right, that's about normal. The one on the left, bottom left of the picture, orange. That clip shouldn't be around, twisted around. I wonder what's going on there. So maybe that'll just twist back, but someone's uh, messed around with that. We'll have a look at that later. No big deal. I'll let you know if there's anything else in the video. If there isn't, thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something. Please hit the like button. And, uh, you know, uh, subscribe, turn the bell on so you don't miss on the next important bit of info. If you want to see more about vehicle service, information, inspections, what you can look at for, on a pre-purchase inspection, check out our playlist. I think it's called Vehicle Inspections or something like that. There's not many playlists headings, probably 20, 25, 30. That will be growing, but at least it's a lot less than the videos. Uh, I haven't seen that fuel hose is going to be rock hard. There you go. 
you can start to see the crack, see the crack up up there in between the, uh, you know what I mean? So that'll be rock hard, that's gonna leak soon, so fuel hose. So this vehicle, first time it's been into us, and it's gonna be all, all I'm gonna say is all the typical usual stuff. I could, all the people watching, I could say, hey, uh, sorry, I was a bit zoomed in the whole time with that. I could say, can you do me a list of all the usual stuff? And all the usuals, know what the usual stuff is, how to avoid it and all that sort of thing. Um, it's had a bit of grease over the years, could probably do maybe with a little bit more there. It's looking, no, no it's looking pretty good actually. Isn't, is that really nice and wet? No, it's dry. That is just what I thought, that's quite dry. So it's been wet before. Needs a bit of grease in the, we haven't, have you lived this yet or? Yeah, it's already done beautiful, so it'll be okay, no worries. I was gonna say, it looks like, looks like they've just been lubed. Assistant is, mate, I'm telling you, He's so efficient, blink and I miss it. There it is, right? It was already a bit messy, so when it's messy and it's been over-greased, I prefer to put a little bit extra grease in there to make sure we're pushing a bit of the old crap out, if you know what I mean. One of the older vehicles, you need to make sure they got, as they get older, the more lubrication you gotta make sure they, they get to look after them, you know? The love, give them the love. Anyway, I'm out of here. Remember what I said? Please like, subscribe, turn the bell on, catch ya.